I'm sure Pastor could do that announcement just as, just as good as I, but I'm going to say to you, please, please, register. We need to find out um, if you're coming to the Mother's Day luncheon, and we'd love for you to come. We'll have a table spread apart. Um, you can fix your plate um, uh, and take it home with you if you'd like. You can stay and eat, or you can call ahead uh, and let us know that you're coming. We need to know that uh, so that we can prepare the meal for you. Uh, Debbie Suggs is, is doing it for us this year, and uh, it's, uh, it's the, a recommended uh, cost of $8. That's what she's charging us. But give as you can. Folks have asked about their children. Put in whatever you think you can for, for your child, and that'll be just fine. And the church will take, the stewardship team will take care of the rest. And normally, this is a time that we raise money to give to someone, but this year, uh, the stewardship team wanted to give back to the congregation. So uh, if you're able to give, that's fine. If not, then that's okay too. But be sure and come. We're going to have a good meal. Uh, be sure and call Jamila. I do the uh, thing online uh, today, if you would. Wednesday is the deadline. Wednesday after Janelle leaves the office is the deadline. Debbie needs at least Thursday and Friday and Saturday to prepare for our meeting. So, and we'll have some other things special for uh, mothers uh, and uh, grandmothers and anybody special in your life uh, on that day as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So 2 o'clock Wednesday is the deadline for that. Um, last couple of things. Um, uh, our youth will gather again this afternoon at 4, and they'll meet at the shelter in the back. Um, also, we'll be recognizing our graduates on, uh, during worship on May 23rd, so please, if you have a, pardon me? Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, thank you. May the 30th. We changed it to the 30th because we had a conflict with the 23rd. So, sorry about that. May the 30th, we'll recognize our graduates. Also, um, please note the plastic trays for your communion uh, for those little kids. Please use those when we do uh, celebrate communion. And lastly, I want to thank Kaylee and Carly for acolyting today. We're slowly getting back to the normal. Kaylee, this is Kaylee's first day doing this. So, and Carly's a veteran, I take it. So, so I have her sit on this side. So that I can say, what do I do next? <laughs> so, does anybody else have any announcements? If not, let us prepare our hearts for worship. This man plays our prayer. Please. 
stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people and turn us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us.
the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. I want to invite the little Lutherans up. And big Lutherans, if you want to come up here too, that's fine. How are y'all doing? Good? I'm glad y'all are here. What's that? That's my stick. Do you know what happened yesterday? I went out in the yard and I got this and I put it by the front door so I wouldn't forget it. And, and my wife came in and she said, what is a stick doing in the front hall? <laughs> Why do you think I have this stick? Why do you think I have this stick? Have you heard about Jesus comparing himself to a grapevine? Well, he does. He said, he said he's like a grapevine and that we're like branches of the vine. Now, I didn't have a grapevine handy, and I thought my neighbor might not like it if I went over to her yard and took one. But I did have this stick, and it's kind of the same thing. So, does it look alive? No. No. It looks like it's dead. You think it'll ever put out any more leaves? I, I don't believe it will. Why not? Because it's broken off from the tree that gave it life, right? So, if it's not connected to the tree, it can't continue. It looks like it almost did. It looks like it started to put out some. But maybe that cold weather we had a few weeks ago caused it to break off. I'm not sure. Now, it's the same with us. The branch can't live if it's not connected to the tree. And we can't live if we aren't connected to Jesus. God, Holy Spirit, right, God in each one of us, right? That's what we're going to hear today. The Bible says Jesus abides in us and we abide in him. That basically means that we live together. He lives in us and we live through him. So that's the good news. We're connected to Jesus just like this branch used to be connected to the tree. Our moms and dads had us baptized, and one day we'll get confirmed. And through all of that, we're still learning, to, learning a little bit more about Jesus every day, aren't we? As we grow up and get more experience, we get better and better at living through Jesus, don't we? So, what do you think? Now, the other part we're going to hear today is um, Jesus says, talks about bearing fruit. Now, this would have, if, if this branch were to bear fruit, what would it look like? It'd be leafy green, little green leaves, wouldn't it? Now, if we bear fruit, what is that? What do you think that looks like? Do we put out leaves or oranges? No, what do we put, what, what, when we bear fruit, what do we do? What does that look like? You all know this. <laughs> There's not a, it's not a trick question. When we do, when we, when we love each other, when we love our friends, and even when we love people we don't know by making them our friends, would you say that's kind of like bearing fruit? I would. I would. That's, that's putting out good fruit for God. And the best news is, even when we feel like we're doing it all by ourselves, we're not, really. Because if God is in us and we're doing what God wants us to do, He'll wait and make everything work out right in the end. That's pretty good, pretty good news, isn't it? You don't have to hear about bad things happening in church, about you know what's going to happen to you if you don't live right. You can hear about things, the way things are going to work out good. So it's important to stay connected to Jesus, our tree, isn't it? So that we can always bear fruit and always love the people that God puts us in contact with, isn't it? I think that's a good place to stop. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, remind us always that we are connected to you and that you teach us and make us grow so that we can better love all the people you have made. Always remind us that everything that comes from you is love and anything that is not love is not from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming up. Yes. Oh, yes, the basket. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at there.
limit one per customer. <laughs> Y'all are doing good. Y'all are doing great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. sins. 
Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he is in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love that God has for us, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect, perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But you know, it's unhealthy for boxwoods or roses or tea trees or grapevines to go on growing unchecked like this. And over time, they lose their shape or they develop a deformity because there's too much on one side, not enough on another. New growth slows down and eventually stops altogether. So mom had the boxwoods pruned and, and because it, was, it had been so long, um, they had no insides. Everything that they were was basically a thin outer shell and so they had to be cut way, way back down to ugly stumps um, with, with trunks um, four or five inches thick. They looked twisted and, and pain, and we worried that they would make the house harder to sell. 
But the following spring, all of them put out bright green shoots all over, and with each year, they came back thicker and more full-bodied and more luxuriant. And the house did sell. My mom had an abiding love for her boxwoods. She loved them enough to give them what was best and to do what they really needed to have done rather than letting them follow their natural tendencies and in spite of how awful she knew it would look at first. Our gospel today is probably my very favorite of all of Jesus' parables and analogies. The image of God's people as a vineyard is a very, very old one. It goes back to the Psalms and to other places in the Old Testament. Um, Psalm 80 says, You brought a vine out of Egypt and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. We see the same thing in Isaiah 5. God clears the land, plants the choicest vineyards, and this represents his people. But the vineyard grows up wild and doesn't produce the way it should. And so God questions the people and says, What more could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? And he goes on to say that since the vineyard is not bearing fruit, he will break it up and trample it down. And what's notable about it is it won't be pruned. It will be left to just become overgrown with briars and thorns. It will be abandoned. Mark and Luke um, both tell us Jesus' parable of the wicked tenants who recognize the heir to the vineyard, but they seize him and kill him in their greed. And here in John, though, we have this language of fruitfulness and abundance and an image of the way in which God cares for us. It's a much more mutual and interactive relationship than perhaps we're used to thinking about. Jesus addresses us again with an I am statement, but now we also hear him say, you are. There's a promise in that. I am the vine, you are the branches. The branches need the vine. The vine is there to support the branches. The branches don't live off their own fruit. The vine grower comes along and prunes and harvests to ensure the health and welfare of the whole. This is a powerful vision of love, one that doesn't characterize God as a punitive judge or God's love as a reward to be sought and obtained, but the nature of God himself, inexhaustible, all-inclusive. Anyone who loves is part of this abundance, and Jesus invites us to live in it here and now, not just at some distant time in the future. But it, it all revolves around this business of pruning. And while we may readily admit that pruning is necessary, it's not necessarily an easy way to live. Jesus does not define what bearing fruit looks like. Okay, so we, we have this assurance that things will grow towards a more fruitful future, but we don't know what that future will look like. How do we bear fruit, for instance, when we are recovering from pandemic? How do we do it when so much of what is going on around us leaves us drained of our spiritual energy? Lots of things can make us feel pruned. At any, any given moment, even when things are popping along fairly well, there's still so many difficult things to contend with in life that it often feels as though we're being cut down and thrown away. Our loved ones die, um, our health deteriorates, our children or our spouses let us down in some way. We labor under constant pressure to perform and to achieve and to fit in. Uh, or else it's the government. The government's a shambles and the economy is languishing. You can point to any number of things all day, every day, we're confronted by personal and impersonal crises that threaten to make us feel cut down and tied up and ready to be thrown out. Such branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned. I think it's a real mistake to take that as a warning of hell. It is simply a fact about a very special and necessary part of our growth into what God would have us to be. He knows what each and every one of us needs and lovingly tends to the needs of every soul, making no exceptions. Which is not to say, by the way, that such things that make us feel pruned are God's way of testing us. Rather, whatever happens, we have God's promise in Jesus to work all things 
for good, removing everything that does not bear fruit and pruning that which does to make it even more fruitful. Our individual pruning shapes us in love within the whole of God's people and collectively directs that love toward the flourishing of his creation. I don't know about you, but I much prefer to look at the world this way, rather than in terms of barely restrained condemnation. As branches, we do not do the pruning. As branches, we abide in the love that comes to us from the vine, and we owe that love to our, that same love to our fellow branches. As branches, we simply have to let God do what he needs to do. We get so used to taking action, we say, if I don't do it, it won't get done. We check our phones and our emails as though everything depends on us. But the truth is, often we just have to notice what God is doing and stay out of his way. That's really what a lot of the abiding is all about, not impeding God by trying to do for ourselves what is his to do. He and only he is the one to prune and shape our hearts and our minds and our bodies. Good news. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. But good news. Jesus knows that and will not let us go because he abides in us, which means that great or small, his pruning ensures, it absolutely guarantees that new growth and new life always lie ahead. God, through Jesus Christ in us, brings all things to fruitfulness. He prospers them and works them to good. He calls us to ventures of which we cannot know the ending and by paths we have not yet taken, but he gives us courage. We don't know where we're going, but we know that his hand is leading us. We know that he is abiding within us. The place that Jesus prepares for us, the many dwelling places in his Father's house, are places where God is deeply at home in us and where we can be deeply at home in him. Not just later, but now and always without end. Thanks be to God.
living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Oh, that's right. She's back there. Would you join me up here for a minute, please? We're sorry that uh, James and Sylvia can't be here this morning, but we certainly do understand. Um, Pam, you and your parents are returning to us from Shiloh Reformed Church and desire to rejoin our community of faith. We rejoice to receive you, members of the one, one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, into our fellowship in the gospel. We welcome you as members of this congregation to join with us in worshiping God, hearing His word, sharing His supper, and proclaiming the good news of God and Christ, the word and the serving all people and striving for justice and peace for all the earth. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord Christ, and rejoice that our dear friends are returning to our congregation. By your life-giving power, bind us each to each other in you. Strengthen us for your service. Support us all our days and bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one as you and the Father are one. Amen. Let us welcome our newest member of faith. You've actually been with us for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, you abide in us and we abide in you. Cleanse us by your word and help us to bear fruit as we seek to serve our neighbor. Prune us that we may bear ever more fruit and glorify you. We give you thanks and praise for your Son who has made it possible for us to be together with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end of all that exists. Bring joy to families who are welcoming babies into their lives, that they might cherish every moment together. Bring comfort to those who grieve the loss of their loved ones, sustaining them in the sure and certain hope of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh Lord our God, we give you thanks for the beauty of your creation for budding trees and blooming flowers, for a renewal of life on this planet. May we be good stewards of all the resources you have given us, especially water, land, and food. May our care for the world you created be a sign of our devotion to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of life, you are the source of all healing and rest. Grant your healing mercy to be with all those who struggle with pain or suffering especially the people of India. Surround them with your comfort. Lord, bring hope to the hopeless, 
and provide for the needs of your people each day. We lift up in prayer Penny, Ruth, Helen, Edna, and we give you thanks for your healing power at work in Wayne. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and 
value series as we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
please remove the seal on the wafer. Body of Christ given for you. Turn your package over and remove the other seal. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.